Today's classic hymn is one of the world's favorites, How Great Thou Art. Do you have any memories of singing this wonderful song? You know, I remember I was probably just out of school and my friends and I started singing this, Gavin and Ryan and me. And we figured out a nice three-part harmony and we would sing this everywhere. Every, anytime we were singing, we would love to sing this song. And then when I started my band, Crossroad, we also we used to sing this all over the place. And without fail, this is one of those songs that just brings the people of God into a place of praise and worship. I don't know if a more powerful song of praise has ever been written. I don't actually think so. So I hope it's going to endure for a long time. I'm sure it will. And I hope that going into the history and the lyrics today is going to be meaningful to us. Where did it come from? Let's have a look. The song was written by a man named Carl Boberg. He was a Swedish minister in the 1800s and in the early 1900s. He had been converted to the faith as a young man, 19 years old, and he ended up serving as a minister and as the editor of a very influential evangelistic magazine. He himself was a very good poet. He was a talented writer and a very good preacher who was well respected. Now, one day, Boberg was walking home with a bunch of friends after church, and he was listening to the church bells ringing, and suddenly, a fierce storm hit. They all had to duck for cover, and then as quickly as it arrived, it died down. The wind stopped, the cloud was gone, and the sun came out. Beautiful. We South Africans know all about that sort of thing. And so, Boberg walked on home and opened up his windows that faced the sea, and as he stood gazing out, he heard the church bells still ringing. He heard the birds singing in the fresh air after the storm. And the words of a beautiful poem began to form in his mind. He wrote this nine-verse poem called, O Great God. He published the words in his magazine in 1886. And a few years later, he walked into a little church and heard the people singing his words to a Swedish song, to a popular Swedish tune. Seems the song had already started to spread. Now, in 1925, the first English translation of this hymn was written, and a professor named E. Gustav Johnson translated it. An early hymnal still have his version, but you and I who know the normal version are going to be confused by these words. They're lovely words, but they're not the words we know, because he wrote this, O mighty God, when I behold the wonder of nature's beauty wrought by words of thine, and how thou leadest all from realms up yonder, sustaining earthly life with love benign, with rapture filled my soul thy name would lord, O mighty God, O mighty God. Now that sounds kind of strange to those who know the more traditional, the more well-known hymn. The more famous words were written by a man named Stuart Hine. He was a British missionary who grew up in the Salvation Army and ended up becoming a missionary in Russia. In the early 1930s, Hine and his wife got to know the Russian version of this song. And then came a time, a couple of years later, where Hine was walking the mountains, the Carpathian Mountains, with some friends of his. And guess what happened as he was walking the mountains? A storm broke out, a mighty storm broke out. So picture them for a moment, walking the mountains with a big cloud, clouds everywhere, and rain starting to fall. And let's start looking at the words and see what inspired them. So there they were with the rain falling, the thunder rolling, and here came the words from Hein, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made, or some say the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Isn't that an amazing thing to have written in a thunderstorm? When last did you experience a big thunderstorm? There was one here in Boxburg just the other day. It caused chaos, trees falling over and all sorts. And I had to marvel as well at the power, the power that God displays in moments like that. Do you get a sense that God is great and big and awesome? Sometimes we forget this. Sometimes we, we, we shrink God so that we can try and understand him. And of course, Jesus was a man. He was a human being. 
But that should never make us forget the great might and power of God. And when we think about God's works, when we think about the the stars and the thunder and the rain, when we see all the amazing things in creation, we should be marveling at who God is and how great and powerful he is. And his power is displayed all throughout the universe, as that last line said. All throughout the universe, and as we know, scientists just keep discovering more and more and more and more out there. It's as if God's greatness cannot be measured. Do you have a sense today that God is great and that the more we find out about the universe, the more we find out just how little we know and how great God is. The chorus goes like this, Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. So that word then shows us that this is in response to what we've just sung. We, we see God and his awesome wonder and the, the rolling thunder and the power of the universe. And because of that, our souls sing and, and they soar in joy as we think about how great he is. I can just picture churches that I've sung at, many of them. As we get into this chorus, everybody's hands kind of just go up because there's something powerful about singing these words. My soul sings, Lord, how great thou art. Verse 2. Now, it seems as if Boberg and his friends kept walking through the mountains as the rain began. And these next words also come out of that. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, that's what they were doing. And hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze. Again, can you picture them just walking through the mountains, looking down on the great sights before them? Probably one of my favorite days ever was a hike that Shireen and I did in the Golden Gate Nature Reserve here in South Africa. It's in Clarence. It's some of the most beautiful mountains you can ever see. And we did the longer hike, I think it was 12 k's or something like that. And it was one of those where you went up and you thought, there we are, we're going to reach the top. You got there and there was another mountain ahead of you. And so we went up that stretch, got to the top and there was another one. And it just never seemed to end. We never seemed to get to the top. It took us hours. But eventually we got to the top and the view was astounding. It was absolutely astounding. We stood up there for a while, just in silence, and looked out. You could see like the whole world, it seemed like, from on top of there. You know, in that moment, my soul was singing, how great thou art, how great is this God of ours, how amazing, how powerful and mighty, how big must he be? That's what you think. You you stand up top there, you see so much of the earth, and yet it's only a little pot which is only a little part of the universe, and God holds it all. How big, how mighty. We sing his praise when we do such things. When last did you get out into nature and just experience God in all his beauty? Do it. Do it. It's something special when we do that. How great thou art. Let's go to verse 3. And it seems as if these words were written in response to all the missionary work that he had done in Russia and in that part of the world. He saw many people come to Christ, have their lives changed by giving themselves to Jesus and receiving his his love. They received his grace and felt their sins washed away. They came to know that they were loved and cherished and that God had a purpose for them in this life. And so he was amazed by this and he wrote these words during the World War, it seems. When I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. I love that line. I can hardly take it in. I can hardly understand what what amazing things are going on here. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Yes, greater still than the might and the wonder of creation. Greater still than the fact that God is so huge and and holds the universe in his hands. Greater still is the fact that he sent his son to die on a cross and bear our burdens. Did you see that line? My burden gladly bearing. He took our burden of sin so that we don't have to carry it. We don't have to feel the guilt of our sins when we come to Christ and have them washed away. 
He bled and he died to take away our sins, to, to cleanse us of our guilt and to empower us to lives of goodness so that we aren't dominated by sin anymore. Can you, can you take it in? Can you understand the depth of that? That is great. That is great news. That is the gospel. And I hope that you've given yourself to Christ and received his love in this way. When you do, you can only sing, how great thou art, how great thou art. And then comes that fourth verse, which is just so powerful. I love singing this verse. It says, when Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Now, it seems that Hein wrote this verse after hearing the story of a man who they'd ministered to in Poland. This man hadn't seen his wife since the World War ended. And he was longing to see her so that he could tell her the good news of Jesus, which he'd heard through these missionaries. He longed to share with her what he'd learned about Christ and how he transforms lives. But he said that even if he never saw her on earth again, which he didn't think he would, his hope was that they would meet in heaven, that they would meet in heaven and share in the eternal life there. And so Hein, inspired by this, wrote these words about looking forward to Christ coming and taking us home so that we can bow at his feet, proclaim his greatness and enjoy life in humble adoration with him in eternity. You know, I've sung the song at a good many funerals too. And there's always something profound about singing those words at a funeral. We think of the one who's gone and we think Christ came and took them home and they fell in humble adoration and proclaimed how great thou art and found joy as they did it. There is joy for a Christian even in death because this is what awaits. The loving embrace of our Father. What joy will fill our hearts when we see him like this. So, my friends, do you know him? Do you know the one who is great? Do you know the one whose greatness knows no bounds, who not only makes the rolling thunder and the birds sing and the sound of the streams, but who sent a Savior so that you and I can one day enjoy eternal life? Give yourself to him and sing the song with me now. Then sings my soul, 
my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when I think that God His Son not sparing sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation. And take me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration And there proclaim My God, how great Thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee, oh, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art.